My guest today is Victor Marks. He's a high-risk humanitarian with successful missions to Iraq, Syria, North Africa, and Southeast Asia, helping orphans and widows. Victor was severely abused and tortured as a child. And by the time he graduated from high school, his lifestyle was filled with drugs, fights, and theft. The discipline of military life and his faith help him recover from his traumatic childhood and empowers him to help others. He is a seventh degree black belt and holds the world record for fastest gun disarm. Victor, welcome. Hey, thank you for having me. I appreciate the opportunity. I'm so glad that you're here. And I, I, I appreciate so much for everything that you've done. And thank you for your service. I, I can't say that enough. Well, thank you for your support. It means a lot when people just acknowledge it. I mean, you know, everybody active are, are veterans. We raise our hand. We volunteered to do it. So, you know, just a thank you uh, goes a long way. Well, and, and I also wanted to ask you about being the fastest gun disarm. How did that come about? <laughs> well, you know what? It's uh, I started training, uh, gosh, like three decades ago on this, and I just learned and you know it's like any skill set you can get better and better so I started shaving off the time to where somebody could point a weapon at me and in eight tenths of a second I could disarm and pull out the magazine and have it pointed back at them and um, it's been fun to do that and the double gun disarm but you know what's interesting is as many millions of views and some of your viewers or listeners will recognize oh my, oh my gosh that was actually him we have hundreds of millions of views what few ask, and I appreciate you asking is, you know, why did I learn? Why did I get that good? And it was from my childhood. I was put in a chair at seven years old. My stepfather put a pistol to my head and he would tap it to the side of my head and go, boy, if you ever tell anybody what I've done, I'll shoot you and tell the police that you killed yourself. So as a child, I kind of made a self vow that one day no one would ever be able to hold a gun on me. And I would, you know, I wanted to be empowered enough to where I wouldn't have the fear of being helpless or powerless in a situation. That's why I did it. And I, I'm certainly thankful to God that he turned it around, you know, uh, to really as a skill set and something I used to glorify him and get people's attention for the bigger story of, you know, he redeemed my life and he's given me a mission to help others who've suffered trauma. And I love that word that you used, empower. You took it upon yourself to get empowered. And now you're helping human trafficking survivors become yes. empowered. How did you get into rescuing human trafficking victims? Yeah. I, you know, I would say one, my father was a, my biological dad was a pimp and a drug dealer. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, I saw firsthand, had knowledge of, women being used and 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 worse the mindset and mentality behind it that once people get into that realm you know it's it's really a form of brainwashing girls to feel like hey you know i'm in control i'm you know i'm they feel empowered that they can control their life by charging money for sex or you know whatever it is and then the pimps who go well i'm just giving them an opportunity for income there's a whole twisted, it's yeah. all up in the mind. Everybody thinks it's about the body, but it's about the mind when people enter and want to stay in that lifestyle. Now, for those who are kidnapped, captured, like we've helped uh, a number of girls and women escape from ISIS who were captured, turned into sex slaves. Uh, as a matter of fact, just last week, we, we were uh, an operation we were part of uh, nine women who were captured by ISIS and uh, forced into sex slavery and all that and end up uh, being impregnated and having children, uh, 12 children. We helped uh, get the kids and the moms out of Syria and they're currently in one of our safe houses in Iraq. I'm sorry, I don't, I don't want to get so close. <laughs> I can't even imagine. I can't, I can't fathom what you go through. Um, that kind of mindset, you got to be strong. And yeah. thank you so much for what you're doing. Um, 
I, I... <laughs> well, it, you know, it's darkness and it does affect you. I mean, those of us who are in the space, either recovering, rescuing or helping with trauma relief or medical or whatever, it, it does affect you. I mean, or else you get super hard and then all you want to do is shoot people in the face who've hurt kids and women. Um, and okay, let me let me stop you there. Because okay. I was I was telling my husband about you and your background and how you're rescuing human trafficking victims. And he said, Well, why don't they just kill them? Mm -hmm. If you know who these bad guys are, why don't you do that, Victor? Um, why well, don't you just go? Why don't you just go? Nobody's looking. Well, I never said that we don't. Okay. <laughs> okay, good. Well, so I, so will, I, I will say this, that depending on the country and the situation, yeah. uh, sometimes it's better, like if people just go to our website, victormarks.com and view the Nora story. Nora was an orphan who was being abused by a very wealthy guy in Cambodia, which is, you know, you know, uh, we're helping to try to change things there with some other good people, but he, he ended up trying to kill her and he's an orphan girl, a teenager. He pours battery acid on her. Ah. Uh, he, he rapes her of course, for the last time, tries to cut her head off, but cuts her hand off and all of this and, um, left her for dead. And it's a miraculous story that she survived and we actually recovered her and then got her three life-saving surgeries, protected her from men who came back to kill her. It's, it's, it's unbelievable. And yet I gave her my word we would find the guy because she would live in fear the rest of her life in Cambodia. And I said, uh, if you just trust me, because God's on our side, we will find this very evil man. And it took us a year. And we did. And we actually have the film. We have footage of uh, the capture. And, you know, we had one of our teams there and we were tracking him. And it was it was pretty, uh, pretty dynamic, the, the, the capture. But now he's in prison. We're making him give restitution to her financially. And instead, could we have smoked him in a heartbeat? We could have, this guy could be fish food or fertilizer. And yet the reality, is that too rough? And the reality oh. is. No, I like, <laughs> I like that. My staff's laughing. None of this is incriminating. Uh, 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 but, but, but the reality is I told people, because a year looking for someone who's untouchable in that region, uh, People started saying, "Hey, boss, just let us let's just send in a smoke team. We'll 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 do this, dude." I said, "No, because he should be captured and publicly, just like Jesus said, he made a public display of forces of darkness. Mm. So now everybody knows who he is, that he was captured, and he couldn't get away with his crime. That is what we want other pedophiles and abusers to lay in bed." looking under their bed for us right going oh my yeah. gosh being scared Just of you being scared that there are good people out there that will not stop looking and we will capture and stop you you know this past year with the pandemic and and everything that's been going on it just seems like i'm doing this all the time and my neck is sore. Like I'm just, yeah. I'm shaking my head at everything. And I cannot believe the evil that there are such evil people out there that would do this to children, to, to a human being. And I don't know how you, you know, stay strong and, and do what you have to do, but um, God bless you for doing that. And you are definitely a, a spiritual warrior. Thank you. And I would say that's the source of our strength. You know, one, I'd say my faith in God. Second, my bride, you know, uh, she is probably one of the most courageous people I know. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, I've been to Iraq, Syria, gosh, 14 times now. We're prepping to go back. 
um, to help more because we actually have safe houses there and everything. But I, I remember the first time I went into Iraq, took a team, and I took a, a high speed, former Delta, Marsoc guys, GRS, CI, right? A, a, a team together to do what we're going to do, plus some, some other folks. But my wife tells me, she goes, honey, I'm praying and I feel like I'm supposed to go with you. Yeah. And I was like, no, you're not. And she goes, well, I think you ought to ask the Lord because uh, he's telling me I should go. Of course we argue. We got, you know, we were fussing pretty good about it because we're talking about life and death. Yeah. So I told her, I said, why do you want to go? Because the mission was to help recover 30 girls who had been captive by ISIS who were suicidal and, and help them with the trauma. And that's what my wife said. My, my little bride, my sugar, I call her my sugar. She goes, <laughs> honey. I know you're going to find those girls. And when you do, you can't hug them, but I can. And mm. I said, you, you're willing to risk your life to hug girls. She goes, they'll need hugging for what they've been through. One girl was raped 15 times before lunch. I mean, the horrendous abuse, it, 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 the, the level of evil is beyond what people could imagine. And here my wife was willing to step into that and on top of that, you know, she said, you know, honey, what's the worst that can happen? We die. Mm. And I said, yes, we die. ISIS is around. I mean, you know, she goes, well, then don't we win? Because if we die, we get to go to heaven. Mm. And she really believes this. It's not, you know, it's beyond just knowing she believes it. And she also just says, God has the number of our days. And it's been her strength and partnership and camaraderie to where man we've led teams into syria we've had isis i've had isis shooting at me dropping mortars it, stuff you just can't even imagine and my wife is just like praying believing god and and just fearless because of the strength of god so i think if we can do it over there we want to encourage christians to do it here you know against you know lesser things but requires courage uh one thing we're big on is protecting your marriage yeah. you know i'm like hey start at home and if people really want to help and i guarantee you you're not going to hear this anywhere else because i just finished uh speaking with someone about a you know something else regarding sex trafficking but here's the reality if people here in america really want to see sex trafficking diminish in america it's not about guys kicking in doors and doing rescues. We have to stop it before it begins. One of the most horrific things I've ever heard a pimp say was he thanked the dads and the stepdads and uncles for preparing the girls for them. Abuse must stop in the home mm -hmm. first. Sexual abuse, molestations in the home. And Second. how do you yeah. how do you think how do you think this pandemic the lockdowns have affected? Um, it went through the roof. It went through the roof. This was one of the most horrible things that could happen, both for abuse, you know, uh, drug and alcohol addiction, mm -hmm. and it was avoidable. And that's why I tell Christians and conservatives, stop complaining, and take action. Yeah. Because once you do an assessment, then what do you like in what we do, you know, developing mission plans and strategies, it, you have to have a solution. And people need to start at their very base level of being on school boards, you know, getting yes. on your city council, mayor, it, you have to get involved. And believe me, I get cross-eyed when Christians tell me, you know, well, Jesus wasn't into voting. And, and I'm like, oh my gosh, first of all, there wasn't voting back then, you idiot. And, and if people really want to stop and see sex trafficking diminish, I mean, people who have really good hearts and want to, it's, you don't need to come to Iraq with us or Cambodia or work with us when we are helping U.S. Marshals or law enforcement here in the U.S. We're getting pedophiles. Pray about fostering a kid. Mm. Pray about adopting a kid out of the foster system. <laughs> These, it's a machine. It is a machine and that's the hard work. Uh, so a lot of people complain and talk and I just go, well, what, 
understand that. But once you reach your assessment phase, what is the do? What is the solution? Yes. And, and, and that's what and people want to know. How can, how yep. can we help? Yes. How can we help you do what you do? Thank you. There's two things I tell people right off the bat. One, pray. That's not a cliche of some ministry deal, you know, because I'm a regular guy, you know, I got a house, you know, I got a little ranch house and that's on a dirt road and I drive a truck. Okay. So it's, you know, I'm not the guy flying in the, you know, multi-million dollar jets. Although if somebody wants to donate one to us, we will get to our targets quicker, but I would say just pray. And the second is of course, give support financially, but they don't have to be big fundraisers. Just do a little bit every month. Yeah. Cause here's what I tell people. Prayer makes it possible. Because we do the impossible oftentimes. We just got a pedophile here in the U.S. last week. And one of our team members, he's new to the team. You know what his, you know what his response was after coming out of the guy's house? Hmm. And we captured everything and him and all, you know, blah, blah, blah. He goes straight out of the silence of the lambs. That was his response. That's how evil it was. So and and people, the yeah. and the th- the the concept that there are people like that in our neighborhoods here yeah. amongst us. Yes. And I mean, it, it just breaks my heart for these um, men, women, children, um, girls and boys who are victims of human trafficking, especially what's going on with the border. I mean, does right. that. It's we're, we're heading down to the border very soon because we're doing trauma relief for children mm-hmm. right now. And I'll say this, there's three things, the prayer, because you can't overcome evil without, without God's help. It doesn't matter. Second thing, a level of support. But the third, be prepared through learning and understanding what it's about. So therefore you won't be paranoid. I tell people in your towns, in your cities, in some of your houses of worship, you walk among rapists murderers and perverts and i'm all for helping anybody because of god's redemptive power but don't be ignorant to the fact yeah. that the majority of men even uh you know in churches struggle with pornography mm-hmm. uh and i'm not talking about some you know therapeutic approach i'm talking about yeah. serious issues like i had a guy one time who this was years ago, but every time me and my wife walked in church, this guy would make a beeline to give my wife a big hug. He just loved hugging my wife Mm. and she's not hard to look at. And I can appreciate his appreciation of her, but I knew he was doing it with dishonorable intentions. So I told my wife one time, I said, Hey, and the deal is he was a pastor on staff at a church. And I told my wife, I said, honey, Watch when we walk in, this guy's going to make a beeline. She's like, oh, Victor. I said, no, because, you know, sure enough, this guy, he, he was clearing people to get to us. Right before he went to give her a hug, I stepped in front and said, you need a hug? Bring, bring it in. <laughs> and, then later, and did he? Did he hug you? Uh, reluctantly, yes. But I, you know what? I Later, later, I caught him in a parking lot and said, hey, I just want to tell you something. I know you're having dishonorable thoughts about my wife that's why you want to he goes well well." i said nope i said don't i said i may be slow but i'm not stupid there's a big difference you know strong back weak mind but i know when someone's you you need to treat all women honorable including my wife and your thoughts and look and uh he goes well you know he said i just said next time i see you looking at her in a way that's honorable doesn't matter where we are i'm gonna punch you right in your nose I'm a bloody your nose, buddy. And he's like, well, what do you mean? And I said, do you think I'll do it? He's like, yeah, you're crazy. I said, well, crazy with a K, but. And sure enough, six months later, that man was cheating on his wife with someone in the church and he had to resign his position and all that. So, and again, I just think people have to be aware. Uh, women, you can't just dress the way you want. No, it's and I think that's days. a. I, I feel sorry for teenagers these days. Well, parents of teenagers and some of the clothing that I've seen them wear, 
um, why wear anything at all? I right. mean, it's, it's, um, and you know, you talk about being aware we had, uh, well, when my son was young, we had a death threat against him because we're hunters. Right. We choose to eat meat. So they had, right. they wanted to, you know, put an yeah, arrow yeah. through my son. And so right. from that moment on the whole world, my whole world changed. And I learned more about um good for you self-protection and because you you are not messing with me or my family don't and i think mama it's, bear. Yeah, yeah don't get that's mama me bear lit up. and i think that's really important for women i mean i wouldn't recommend everybody you know getting a death threat but it does wake you up i i got another one when i we we went to the white house and had yep. uh, dinner with president trump and i posted photos i had death threats that are on file now with the FBI that are real serious. Right. And it makes you it, 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 it makes you wake up. It makes you look and and you feel differently. I I get goosebumps now thinking about it. you probably get that all the time when you're on missions and you've how important is your instinct to you? Yeah, it's incredibly important. First of all, I meant to saving plants. So save plants and eat an animal. Uh, you, you, you know, the way people are these days and the, the increase of evil, uh, there's this balance of, we do not have to live in fear. The Bible says God's not given us a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. Second Timothy one seven. And we've had death threats. I've had a beheading threat from ISIS folks. Now, Granted, we're grateful in that particular situation. In 72 hours, we found the guy because it was through the internet. We tracked him and and put together a counterterrorism package, and he was picked up within 72 hours. That's why I tell people, don't Google where I live. But here's the deal. It's healthy for women, and we do training out here. In Colorado, we have a leadership training center. This weekend, we're bringing in former trafficked women Mm. who are trafficked and we will work with them on situation awareness spiritual like you know confidence emotional training right because they've struggled with psychological issues but we'll do jujitsu on the ground teach them how to use a blade and we'll bring them to the shooting range and teach them how to shoot that really empowers a woman yes. yeah. uh, and i think we need to even start with our daughters right so yeah. yes the, the problem in america it's not isis it's 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 the lack of men in a home i believe yeah. with all my heart to help guide this but we have to work with our daughters our granddaughters our women because to make hard targets not simple targets and uh the last thing i would say on that is we need to teach our kids situational awareness and then the confidence to know when a guy's trying to get weird and I'm not just talking about some van with a, you know, crazy guy slide the door open going, Hey, here's some candy. Help me look for my dog. I I'm talking about the boyfriend who's slick, the guy in high school, who's talking to her and we'll get her to drink a little bit, lower her resistance and then compromise her beyond her. We just read today, North Carolina is trying to pass a bill. You ready for this? No, that will allow, no, this is horrific I didn't. that it's, that once a person is engaged in some sexual activity, they can't say no anymore. What? It doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. It's it's so they've they've given up their consent to stop once they've engaged in some type of sexual activity. That that is a it, green it light just, for rapist. It just blows my mind. Like I said, like the whole day, if I ever turn on the TV and we, and we very rarely do anymore, I'm just, I'm, I'm shaking yeah. my head all the time. I don't right. believe what is going on right now, but there's no question. Um, we're all, we're, this is a spiritual war that we're fighting It is now more it than is. ever. I think this has really brought more people closer to God and reading yeah. the Bible. And for that, I guess we could be grateful but um, Victor, I I promise you, I'd get you out of here on a, a certain time. I'm enjoying and the conversation. I'm okay. I'm not, I'm not in a rush. This okay. Is good. 
Well, I don't want to take advantage of that, but I would love to, to interview you more often because I feel like this is something that people really need to hear, obviously. And like I said, you know, this was this was kind of new to me. I mean, I knew, I knew about, you know, prostitution, but you heard a little bit about trafficking, but it is so prevalent in every city yeah, every all city. over the world. Unbelievable. It, it, it just, it breaks my heart and blows my mind. So what, what can people do to, besides, besides helping you, you, you had started to talk about in their communities, get involved in school board. And the problem, the problem with people getting in politics is what one side says about the other side, it tends to wear you down and sure, the sure. lies, oh, people sure. believe the lies. There's all sorts of things out there about my husband that aren't true. Of and course. that what they do is they keep repeating it over and over and over and over. And then, oh yeah, the truth is buried in page 20 of the right. newspaper or whatever. So how do you build up um, that empowerment within you to and, and also encourage people to get involved in, in politics and stop this insanity? Yeah. We, we need people to become courageous, critical thinkers, courageous, critical thinkers. And that's where you don't believe everything you read or see. You, you listen, but then you put it through a little litmus to go, well, let me, let me check the sources. And by and large, people in America are lazy. They just tell me what I want to hear. Well, that's, where, that's how we got to where we are now. We've, no become, we've become lazy. Um, right. m- half of us haven't voted ever. Right. Right. And we just go, Oh, you know, what are we going to do about it now? And now with this, you know, pre this election and everything we know that went on, um, right. it's waking people up. And that's a very good thing. I, w- I would say this, cause I haven't, we didn't discuss this, but this has been a time where you really see Christian leaders, pastors and leaders and musicians, you find out what they really believe, you know, and some of them use Christianity as a cloak to still vote for things. I mean, killing children. I mean, if people, if our country, even Christians just understood who in the, you're worried about, you know, uh, responsible hunting for controlling herds. And I mean, responsible but yet you have no passion about protecting right. babies, right? Full-term babies. You, right. You know, how off is this though? People need to start asking their pastors and spiritual leaders, what do you believe? Not take for granted that this is a very practical thing. Start with there. Almost like you would talk to a politician. What do you actually believe? Put it in writing. Cause believe me, a lot of these men who for years and they have big radio stations, they, they're actually very leftist, liberal leaning, uh, not conservative values until you push them and they say, oh, oh, okay, well, or they try to hide it. And I called a lot out on social media in a respectful way, but I had one pastor in a very large church contact another guy and say, you need to tell Victor Marks, if you know that guy, to call me and apologize. He goes, for what? He goes, I lost 400 people from our church. He said, why? He goes, well, you know, Victor put me in that position where I had to kind of give a positional statement. I'm like, well, what's wrong with that? We should know. Yeah. Yeah. So start, start there. And then this courageous critical thinking, we do a daily intelligence brief that we send to, I mean, we're over 70,000 people that get it every morning. And that's my team of analysts that comb through the news, analyze what's true and false, and they're presented in a single email drop. And I would tell people, sign up for that. Right now it's free, they, but they got to sign up quick. Victor Marks with an X.com forward slash brief. And I signed up for it. There you go. Bless <laughs> your heart. But isn't it nice to be able to open that up and go, oh, okay, here are the top stories. Here's yep. what's true. Here's what's, that was a rumor. It's you false. can't, you cannot believe what is on mainstream media. No and way. I feel sorry for people who do uh, get their news from those, you know, uh, alphabet 
uh, soup yeah. companies. And they, they don't do that, like what you were saying, critical thinking for themselves. They believe everything they see and how they can't, how they can't see. They don't have eyes to see, Victor. Right. And that's what we have to pray for, that they have eyes to see and ears to hear because they're being fed a line of things that uh, images that are spun and it's out of control. And, and it, it kind of pretends like you know what's what's good is bad and oh, for sure it, everything's upside down in this world right now and that's actually what the bible says in the last days people would call good evil and evil good you'll get wrapped around an axle if you're just watching the news you, i mean you'll get torched so quick it'll rob you of your peace and your joy and that's that's what i say keep the peace keep your own personal peace don't let anything come in that will to ratchet you uh, be selective what you hear. And then remember, ultimately, th this would be the last thing I would encourage people. Ultimately, this is a battle between good and evil. It really is. Do you read or listen to scripture? You should. I just tell people, you know, the most important thing is to read the word of God or hear yes. it or, or listen to worship. Uh, you got to keep your spiritual person, you know, built up. Uh, however that looks right and then you're ready for the day and remember god has placed us here on this timeline of eternity for a very specific reason you're doing what you're called to do you're being a voice that's being heard you're using your platform you've got a great following and uh it's not for selfish ambition it's for a greater good and i appreciate that because there are a lot of people who they as my wife says, says, they're just selfish. They stay selfish versus going, Lord, you, you put yeah. me here. You've given me that. What can I do for your glory? Yeah. And that's including using our skill sets, whatever space, whatever lane he puts us in from, you know, uh, the, the music industry to politics, to business, whatever. Let's just glorify God, live, live lives of integrity and, and, and solid character and that we're missing these days, but, um, yeah, so I'm, I'm excited. We'll get, we'll get down there and visit with y'all in person. You uh, should, so. you guys should come and, and shoot. My husband isn't the fastest gun disarmer, but he's pretty darn quick. Oh yeah, no, he, Ted's got great skill and, uh, uh, we, we will, uh, we'll do some motion too. We'll let him teach me how to do you, do you do you hunt? We do. Uh, we do. We've traveled so much; it's yeah. hard. So all I need, all I need, is an invite to a simple little hunt, and I'd be okay. there in a heartbeat. And That's and it. do you sh we can sh do you shoot a bow and arrow? Because yeah, we okay. Yeah, right. Right now we're working on recurve and oh, uh, good for you. Yeah. Uh, uh, so yeah, and uh, yeah, my wife keeps saying, "Honey, you got to fill the freezer with some meat." I said, okay, well, let me, let come me on down to her. Texas. We got, we got the animals, you know, Victor, um, I feel like I'm a Christian in a rock and roll world, but I yes. think you are. And so are a lot of people, the rock and roll world, meaning this crazy world in which we live yeah. and we find ourselves, it doesn't seem right. And I've always said that I feel like an unlikely messenger. I mean, yeah. my background is I, I've been a fitness instructor for 40 years and I've written a few books and uh, I just, I never felt like I really belonged to the rock and roll industry. Like I didn't, I did, don't tell anybody, promise you won't tell anybody. I, I won't. Just I didn't this. know any of my husband's music when I met him. Right. And he knows that sometimes I'll hear things and I'm like, who did, who, who did that? And he's like, I did. I'm like, oh. I, I feel like God put me here and maybe I have this, you know, uh, platform for, for a reason. And that, that is to help people and to educate people. I've had a lot of people come to my Facebook page and say, I just had to check out and see who Ted Nugent's wife was, Of course, but I stayed because of your message. Of course. Yep. So that's why I'm here. And, and you brought up something that, and I'm going to let you no, wrap it up with, yeah, with this, but talking my my background is in health and wellness what do you do to stay healthy thank you well my wife has a fitness background as well and uh 
uh, she was actually Miss Fitness USA. So yeah, awesome. she was the first one. She says, you know, she was in wooden clogs and a potato sack and doing a competition. Uh, back in 1923, she said. I don't think so. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what? Nutrition is the most important. Sleep, Sleep. is is critical. And then managing your stress, because uh, stress is a silent killer. And, yeah. uh, you, you know, I, I, it's a passion of ours that we, we're about to come out, I mean, actually very quickly with a, a supplement line for sleeping and for energy. Uh, I was just going to say, what do you do to, to shut that down at night? How do you do that? Yeah. Shutting the brain down is hard, especially <laughs> like. You know, this morning by 10 o'clock, I had received communications from Cambodia, Syria, regarding Syria, uh, Burma, from the jungle, and Iraq uh, by 10 o'clock this morning. And sometimes the communication comes in from, you know, 1 a.m. to 5. So, uh, it, you know, sleep is important, mm -hmm. decompression, uh, but loving your spouse is critical. Because if you go to bed angry, upset, or not connected, it's it's bad. So we're very intentional on loving each other. We believe in a healthy, good relationship. We limit the negative, like friendships, and, mm. and you know we compartmentalize. Because I mean, you guys during the spotlight, you know how many people will come to you to use you for something, or they want to touch the magic or whatever. It's like. So we keep our, we keep those stuff separate. And uh, my wife loves listening to Bible studies at night. Oh, does she have the pray app? I have, uh, I use the pray app. She doesn't have that one, but oh. she listens to uh, like just, just certain Bible studies we can share, but oh, it's nice. fun. It's fun because we want to go to bed with the word of God saturating our mind. And then in the morning she's up. She serves me coffee every morning before I get out of bed, this woman. And uh, she sits there with her Bible and her journal, and she'll mm. draw down from the Lord. Mm. And uh, that sets our day because we know we're going to have conflict. We know yeah. we're going to have yeah. hard time. And we expect it, right? When you, when you don't expect it. Uh, and God, it's so important for people to build resiliency in their life. That's getting hit and getting back up and going, yeah. I just got knocked down. I don't care what it is. Failure, sin, re rejection, betrayal. Okay, boom. I get back up. This is part yeah. of it. And remember, we're fighting the battle against good and evil. But that's that's hard for a lot of people. Once they get knocked down, they don't know how to get back up. And, and they don't have a good support system around them. But one of the things that um, I encourage people to do is to find the thing that makes their heart sing. So oh, yeah. what you're doing all day long, you know, and, and you're focused on, you know, helping rescue human trafficking victims, which is ama amazing. Um, I, I think there's no greater uh, activity right now, these days, especially now with what's going on at the border. Um, but, it, but your mind is constantly going. And right. what I like to do is just shut down, shut down the TV, spend yeah. time with my dogs. Yes, um, yes. And and just focus on them. I throw the darn ball a hundred times for my German yep. Shepherd. I cannot, I can't throw it enough. And right. I just, I got to be all in, a hundred percent all in in those moments. And those are the little things that um, overall make a big difference. Right. Uh, we talk about being busy, but balanced. Yeah. And because uh, people say you're too busy. Well, but we're balanced with it. Yeah. Uh, we work out. We, we both work out together. Um, I'm in a phase right now where I like swimming. Ooh, I love to swim. Yeah. So uh, it was funny because it was like 63 degrees a couple of weeks ago after a big snow blizzard. And I was out there going, whew, okay, keep keep going, son. You, you went swimming stuff. outside? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because doing laps, you know, in the snow, it was, it was fun. Uh, good for circulation. But in, uh, <laughs> well, good for you. Well, we'll have to have you guys 
come down and um, we'd love to share a campfire with you. As my husband always says, it sounds like you have an amazing wife. I can't wait to meet her and you. And uh, thank you so much, Victor. God bless you. I hope and pray um, that you are safe and all of your missions are 100% successful. And I'm going to link all of your info to uh, this interview. Thank you so much. Uh, I appreciate y'all and what you do and what you stand for. And we look forward to getting you up here at the Leadership Training Center. We'll do some training with some uh, Delta guys. Uh, and I'll tell you a little secret. There's actually female Delta operators. Nice. In this world that few know of. Uh, so it's pretty fun. But we appreciate y'all and God bless you. I look forward to visiting with you again. Thank you so much. And thank you, everybody. Please share this because you never know who might need to see and hear it. See you next time.